So it's uh, the 7th of November 2016, time for physics fun, but it is a Monday. And uh, what we're looking at is standing waves. So I've got a power pack set to about 6 volts and an AC source. I've got a circuit with a crocodile clip and it measures um, all the way down here, the length from the prism back to my wooden block. And then I have some tension on this wire, so look all the way down the wire, and that's my other part of the circuit. And I've got a 2 newton weight hanging off the edge there. Now then, what am I looking at? Well, if I turn the power pack on, <clears throat> you can see there, lovely, standing wave with just half, effectively, of a waveform. So half a waveform in between. And if I move my prism, so I'm now going to, I'll come in a little bit. If I move my prism up, look what happens. The waveform goes. So there's a point where I find that L, this length in between, is actually half of a wavelength. I'm going to get it to the right point there. So we've got a resonance. And I can measure with a ruler this distance between the two points. I can double that to find lambda. I then know that C, wave speed, equals F lambda. But I also know that mu, or the mass per unit length of the wire, is equal to the tension. The tension is from the weight, so it's about 2 newtons, divided by the speed of the wave. And if C equals F lambda, I can do that. And so I can work out the mass per unit length of this wire. Okay, And clearly, the thickness of the wire will change its properties. Now, I can also... After I switch off, I can cut just one meter of this wire and I could measure it, couldn't I? And I could do one meter and it will tell me the mass per unit length. So it's a clever way using standing waves of working that out. And of course you could reverse that and you could work out what the length would be to have a standing wave in reverse. So AS physics, looking at waves with an AC signal of 50 Hertz gives me my mass per unit length. How clever.